a good morning to everyone um, so I came across this website on the internet um, yesterday called lacan.com or lacan online let me just get the title yeah it's lacanonline.com now uh, there's this piece that I found there titled what does lacan say about ellipsis desire by Owen Hewitson now I think it's interesting to take up such an article because of the imports which psychoanalytic theory offers to the humanities in general but to literature departments and sociologists in particular not to mention its use in the analysis of discourses and its roots in linguistics and things of that kind but what I would want to highlight is its therapeutic potential which is really where the um, history of the practice comes from with Lacan's emphasis on going back to Freud and in fact for example in its ability to treat conditions such as aphasia or language loss which is not a very difficult condition to identify amongst an aging population even amongst a relatively younger population particularly in new, unfamiliar and uncomfortable places which subjects of trauma often have had a history of encountering. Now, without any further introduction, allow me to read to you some notes that I made and let's see where we can get to from there. If for Lacan, the signifier slides under the signified, unlike perhaps the commonsensical notion of a signifier, if not a series of them sliding over the signified. What made the signified be here but desire itself? Here. We do see why for Lacan desire is always the desire of the other. For it seems that the signifier is produced in a moment of anxiety in confronting the other. Yet what if our very understanding of the subject is only accountable as desire? Would this not be the very faculty which allows us to identify the gap in the other to begin with. Lacan notes that here it would be imperative that the subject find a mechanism to sustain their desire and here it would be impossible to avoid the subject of if not transference let us call a certain displacement. What shifts here is the object of fixation, an operation which is necessary via the mechanism of transference. Were the subject able to reconstitute their desire? The proof of such a transference would only be evident in the inability of the new object of fixation, the demand, as it were, to satisfy the desire which posits it. And, you know, I believe as children and even as, well, let us say, um, amateur political organizations, we have faced a history of this, uh, about how um, even the realization of certain possibilities don't seem to, in some ways, assuage what created the impetus of a movement, but let's not divulge from what the subject of our, or the subject of my notes are at least. The lesson here is simply that the metonymic fixation is always a stand-in for desire itself, which appears here within psychoanalysis as the only signified. The truly interesting generic question would be whether this process of displacement may be employed via a subject 
to posit a demand that cannot be conceptualized when the signifier alone is what slides. Or in other words, is there a quote-unquote beyond to this process of displacement or the sliding of the signifier if that is all that is um, perceived within the uh, transference in question. To be clearer, if desire retroactively constitutes the subject via its enunciation, can the signified as desire representing the subject not itself be displaced? An ideal scenario of this would be a patient of trauma retracing a certain sequence of events, the narrative as it were, hence understanding how things came to be what they were. A more complicated though commonplace example, however, would be the public use of masks or what effectively is the same thing, the private use of screens. These via communicating through the internet permit for forms of displacement in the desiring subject, which are opaque, novel, and requiring investigation. Here, we would do well to pay credence to Zizek who has made some pioneering analysis regarding configurations of subjectivity in um, digital <laughs> What is emphasized by the piece, however, indeed what will remain key to the psychoanalytic process in its investigation of the unconscious, is not the experience of sublimation into dream images as such but rather the putting into words of such experiences. The question of interest which then presents itself to us is the nodal point by which the pulsation of the unconscious is linked to sexual reality. Why is this a question? Perhaps because it reveals itself to us consciously and not as an impressionistic image in the use of the word. Its inflections, stress and relations with others in the discourse. Let us be clear here. Lacan is not talking about the master signifier which orients discourses, God, man, democracy, etc. But the object cause of desire or what he refers to as the object Petit A. Now, there have been, for example, various kinds of um, psychoanalytic readings that are deployed in the study of a text. Um, and of course, there are sociologists, very prominent ones from the Frankfurt School, such as um, Horkheimer and uh, uh, even to some extent Walter Benjamin, but I think we are all consciously thinking about Theodore Adorno here, who do try and employ something similar to a psychopathology of everyday life which is encountered. Inhibitions and slips and forgetfulnesses and our interactions with our um, surroundings, uh, entailing activities which we require to simply reproduce our own lives, which entail this very mechanism of displacement in terms of how the um, signifier, as it were, slips underneath the signified. Or am I getting it wrong there? Let me just check. <sighs> and I think this is how we can, in some ways, think about what the subject of psychoanalysis tries to self-consciously study. You may consider it, in some ways, the surface on which we can notice the changes, the displacements, the inflections, the um, modifications of how we would express our relation to the objects of um, our desire, perhaps in some cases even antagonism. 
And I think this in some ways starts a very basic introduction, which I hope would perhaps spark your interest in some of the work that Lacan has done and some of its applications, particularly for me, for instance, what interested me in it and how I got into it was in the, was via literary analysis in, for example, studying the uh, very minute plots of a poem and things like that. But I'm sure you may find other uses for it as well. In any case, if you do find videos of this kind to be interesting, and if you do have any comments or anything of that kind, please feel free to leave a comment below. I will present a copy of the text itself in the link below the video, so you can check that out and read it yourself. And thank you for your time. Bye-bye.